Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason and today we are doing the very first mods to the Panther Project. So stay tuned. Alright, so the very first thing that we're going to be doing to this car is we are going to re be replacing the belt tensioner, Yippee. an idler pulley, Yippee. and the belt itself. Yippee. And uh, I'll show you why. So as you can see that tensioner, it's quite corroded, which means it's been getting a lot of weather on the front of the motor, much like these pulleys. But what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to hold tension on this belt, and well, it's not doing a very good job. Let me show you what I mean. The way that this is designed is that you should be able to take a ratchet, stick it in there, and put tension on it, like so. And when you let go, the spring inside should snap it back. Well, Whoa -oh. I just let go and it did not snap back. So we are going to replace this. This pulley here is bad. We're also going to put a new belt on it while we're at it. So let's get to her. So what you're going to need is a 13 millimeter for this nut. Matrix system. 10 for the tensioner. So let's get those off. Any luck. Just spin it off. If you hear that on camera, but she's singing pretty good. Good morning, USA. Around that bearing. And with any luck, that uh, tensioner should just pry it off there. Just like so. And that bearing actually sounds pretty good. So sometimes if this pulley goes bad, you can replace just the bearing on the tensioner. But the tensioner itself is bad. The spring is all rotted up inside. So we're going to replace the whole thing. And I believe by the size of the box, I can tell that it comes with a new bearing anyway. One thing you want to make note of is to make sure that your vehicle has a belt rooting diagram on the uh, inner fender here or on the uh, around the rad support. Because if you don't have this, you can go to Google and uh, search for it there. Just make sure you get in the right vehicle because it does list two different routings depending on which engine, whether it's the 4.6 or the 4 valve that comes on the Marauder. Also take a look at the uh, parts. We've got the... Uh, tensioner this is the part number for the tensioner this is the new belt and then you've also got the uh, idler which is here these are all deco parts available at carquest some people tend to have their uh, specialty on what they want to use for belts gates or deco or whoever and i have no problem using deco i've had very good luck with them so that's what we're going to do Well, that looks like it went on there pretty good. Duh. I followed the instructions to the belt routing. It's all in each of the grooves on all the grooved pulleys. And the back side, the flat side of the belt, is on all the flat sides of the pulleys, such as the tensioner here and the uh, what I assume is the water pump. So let's go start it up and uh, make sure the noise is gone. <laughs> Well, that was a pretty simple job. It literally only took me about probably, uh, you know, five minutes or less all together. Had all the parts here, all the tools ready to roll. So now we're going to move on to the next mod. So let's get to it. But before we go too much further, we got to clean these greasy hands. And what better time to try out the new Zolex hand cleaner that we got in our last tool heads crate. Let's see how this stuff works. Reach in there. We'll grab a little bit. Just a dab. And we'll start just kind of rubbing it all in. Pushing real good. And we'll just take some paper towel and wipe off all the excess. Works pretty good besides the fact that you got lots of residue left in your hands and I'm sure that this stuff is meant to be used with water so I'm just gonna go get the rest of this off with the garden hose but I'm pretty impressed with the clean hands what do you guys think leave your comments down in the comment section to see if you'd go out and buy some some Zolex hand cleaner it does say to wet first so I didn't read the instructions 
So the next thing that we're going to do to the car is not necessarily a mod per se, but one thing I do like to have is Bluetooth capabilities when I'm driving my vehicle. So we did get a hold of a Bluetooth radio and backup camera combo. So we're going to dig into that. We'll show you what it is and then we're going to install it on the project car. I'm really hoping very, very soon that we'll come down with a name for this car because I'm getting tongue tied on what to call it other than something as silly as project car. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, go take a look. We hopefully have some polls up there. You guys can vote on your favorite name. So we do have our little dash kit and this is brackets that hold it into place on the car. So there's your part number on that one and a wiring harness, which uh, again, there's your part number. I did get these from Amazon uh, because I did have some uh, loyalty points built up on a card. So I use that. Uh, that's the only reason why I bought those. Usually I get these locally uh, from my neighbor, uh, Rob next door at Cox Electronics. This is not anything special. As you can see, it comes in a brown box and somewhere on here it says, Sorry, China. So we're not expecting a whole lot of quality here, but I couldn't beat the price. I will leave the link in the description box down below. Everything that you see here was about $160 Canadian. That's like 115 or 20 bucks American. So we open this up and the first thing we see is our backup camera, which also has night vision on it. So there's all your power and, and uh, video cords. We've also got steering wheel controls, so I guess this looks like it must wrap around the steering wheel somehow. Pretty cool. And this, oh shoot, this is your GPS. This thing's got GPS. Surprise. So here's your wiring uh, for your speakers and your power. It's also got a remote control that you can control, I guess, from anywhere else in the car if you're not using the uh, one for the steering wheel. Last but not least, there is our radio. So it's not very big. I mean, nowadays, without the uh, use of CDs or cassettes, it doesn't need to be very deep. Everything is kind of contained. So you've got all your outputs. You've got your GPS antenna here, as well as your radio antenna. And then this is for your camera. It's labeled cam in and then you've got your uh, wiring going here. So it's a pretty big screen. I, don't, I forget what they said the size was on that screen, but it looks like it's probably about a eight inch maybe. Uh, they measure from corner to corner. It does have the uh, auxiliary plug-in as well as uh, USB. Uh, GPS, there is your, there's your little GPS card, SIM card. One thing I do like about it is that it actually has a volume knob and it's got little clicks on it so you can feel it. And then you've got your forward, your back, and there's your power button. There's your infrared sensor, your microphone for your Bluetooth. Everything's there. So let's see if we can't get messed around and get this thing installed. First, we got to get the old one out of the car. Now, any of you guys who have ever had or looked at a Ford stereo, you'll notice that on either side, they have these two little holes. And what those holes are for is those are the lock keys that you have to insert to take them out. Now, don't worry if you don't have those special tools. All you've got to do is take an old wire coat hanger. Mind blown. Cut it and bend it in half like that because all you're doing is shoving these in and it's bending a couple of tabs back. So that's what we're going to try and do. We'll pull those out and see what kind of wiring we have in behind the radio. Stick that one in there. Stick that in there. So if you've got small little pudgy fingers like mine, usually you can just kind of stick your finger in the tape deck and give it a little tug and the whole thing pops right out. Say what? And just like that, we are good to go. So seeing as how we've got to connect this wiring harness to this one, I thought I don't have any crimp connectors here, but what a great way to start using my new soldering iron that I got from Toolheads Crate last month as well as my Calhawk crimp, uh, crimp tool for cutting the wires and all these nice colored heat shrinks. So 
that's what we're going to do. So we're just waiting for that to heat up and it's feeling pretty hot there now. We've also got our solder that came with that kit as well. You just pull out what you need. But before we get started, we are going to start by pulling off some of these ends that are already pre-cut. Some of these we're not going to use. Like for instance, we're not going to use the orange because orange as a rule is always illumination. These things generally light up by themselves. We've also got your power antenna and or your amp control. Well, we don't have either of those in this car, so we're going to uh, not use those. We've got your power, or so we've got your ground, we've got your power and your switch power here. And then the rest of these are all speakers, front and rear, left and right. So I'm just gonna take these and cap them off. We're not gonna use them at all. And that's something you don't find every day is a sharp blade on a crimp tool. Look at it. Pretty good stuff so far. So a lot of these aftermarket companies, when they go and they produce these wiring harnesses, basically all they're doing is they're color matching these Metra kits. So all you have to do is match red to red, black to black, and yellow to yellow over on this side. And then again, these are all your speakers and they'll match all the ones on the speaker side. So we're gonna start with the red wire. It's already pre-cut. So we just take that little piece off. We're gonna give it a little bit of a twist. Come on, let's do the twist. We're going to, uh, before I twist that together and forget, we're gonna put some heat shrink down on one side. So we'll just slide that down like so. We are gonna take the two red wires. I'm not a professional when it comes to 12 volt wiring. I don't claim to be. If you want some professionalism on 12 volt wiring, you go find junk for work. On his channel, I'll leave a link in the description box below and he can show you how it's done and how to properly break a soldering gun. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try and see if we can uh, get this soldering gun to work the way it's supposed to. She's good and hot, that's melting up already. So we're gonna get that good and hot. And then we're just gonna touch some solder in there. And we're not gonna breathe that in just because we don't want cancer at the age of 44. Let's set that aside. And voila, we've got heat. So I'm just gonna take this little heat shrink tube we are going to put it right there, cover that wire. We'll come back to it with some heat and uh, melt that up. So I'm going to do the same for the rest of these. Maybe we'll do that to some music. So because I don't have any butane for my little pencil torch that I got with the tool heads crate, I'm going to have to wait on that. I do have this old hair dryer that I've been using for a lot of other things to heat things up, so I'm sure it'll melt this uh, heat shrink tubing pretty neat, pretty good. So let's uh, let's try her out over here on these first ones that we did. So now that we've got all of our wires heat shrinked together, I'm going to take some black tape, wrap it all up so that everything looks all nice and neat once it goes into the vehicle. And that looks a little bit neater than a bunch of wires just kind of going all willy-nilly. So now we're going to go and tear out the old radio and put this new one in. So let's go. So we've got our harness here. Now, one thing I did notice is there's a couple of extra wires here. What that tells me is that possibly this car has a built-in amplifier. I did not get the wiring harness for the car with the built-in amplifier. The easiest way to tell, supposedly, is if you look at the front of your radio and it said premium sound, pretty well guaranteed it had the external amplifier pretty smart aren't you well, we're going to test this first we'll plug that in there we'll plug the other ends into our new radio and see how it works look at that cooking with gas now boys and there you have it folks there is the cheap chinese branded bluetooth backup camera and GPS all in one for about 150 bucks, 160 bucks installed Canadian money. So I'm going to leave the links for these from my Amazon down below. You guys can go take a look and see what you think, but I don't think you can get too much easier than that. The setup for my Bluetooth was, was simple as can be and very 
responsive, very easy, very user friendly. My only complaint is that I cannot change the time from 24 hour clock to 12 hour clock. But I can probably live with that because I do know how to make that difference. Sometimes I just want to see that it says that it's 8.30 and not 20, 26. Anyways, that's it. Very, very simple. I did have to trim one little piece across the top of the uh, uh, trim panel. This whole piece had to come out, um, which means this cover comes off and there's about seven screws all together uh, that hold that thing in there. But went together very easy. I do not have the backup camera and the GPS hooked up yet, but that will be for another video. And now that it is the next day, Thursday, I had the windows tinted on this car and you guys are going to get to take a look. So let's see what this thing looks like with the new tinted windows. So guys, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the mods so far to this Grand Marquis. Now, I did tell you on Instagram that by this episode, we were going to have a name picked out on what we were gonna call this project, and, well, we have it. So as it sits right now, it looks like Project Grandma is the winner, and uh, I think that's probably what's gonna end up being for this car is Project Grandma. And one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I did, if that indeed was what we were gonna call this car, was I was gonna take all the badging off here for where it says Riverview Ford, and I was gonna remove all the badging here where it says Marquee LS. So everything from the R back was gonna go away, and it would just read Grandma. I thought that that was pretty ingenious, and I wanna thank you guys for taking part in those polls and making sure that we knew exactly what we were gonna call this project so as it sits right now project grandma is what it is i hope you guys like it i hope you guys like this episode and enjoyed everything that we did and as we finish up this video i also want to let you know that it has been sponsored once again by sussex beard oil put their link right here you all know what the promo code is glove box i'm going to put that here basically what you get is you get a free travel size beard oil when you buy a regular size just by using that promo code we are going to be changing up that promo a little bit. I've been talking with Matt and he thinks that we're going to try a few things a little bit different. So stay tuned for some changes with that and uh, we'll be sure to let you guys know what's going on. I have been getting a few license plates in the mail from a few uh, viewers and I really appreciate that. We're going to get back to work on Project Wall Art. If you have a few, I have my addresses listed down below. Please go ahead and send them off to me. I will make sure that I give you a big shout out on the channel and uh, I really appreciate anybody and everybody who has done it to date. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. The su subscribe button is down below there with the little bell notification. That way you get notified every time I upload a new video. We are this close. We are about 150 watch hours away from getting that 4,000 watch hour goal, which means I can start earning money on YouTube. By earning money, that basically means what little bit I'm gonna get. It's all gonna go back into project vehicles on the channel. So guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.